This is module two, lesson two, solving one-step equations. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve equations using addition and subtraction and solve equations using multiplication and division. Let's learn, solve one-step equations involving addition or subtraction. So first, to solve an equation means you are finding all the values of the variable that make the equation true. Each value that makes the equation true is called a solution. Equivalent equations, which we saw equivalent expressions in one of the previous lessons, similar to that, they will have the same solution. In addition to all the properties we've learned so far, which will help us, we have a couple new properties that will also help us to find these solutions. First, we have the addition property of equality. So the addition property of equality just says that if a number is added to each side of a true equation, then the resulting equation is also true. So as long as you add the same thing to both sides, you're not changing the answer. So they didn't give us any numbers here, but let's say we know that five equals three plus two. We know that's true. If we were to add, let's say four to both sides, it's still true. Five plus four is equal to three plus two plus four. So adding the same thing to both sides, the equation will still be true. The same thing works for subtraction. So the subtraction property of equality is pretty much the same as the addition one. You're just subtracting from both sides. If we took our same situation, five equals three plus two, and let's say we decided to take away four from both sides, we would end up with an equivalent equation that's also true. Five minus four is one. Three plus two is five minus four is one. So taking away the same from both sides doesn't change your answer. Example one, solve by adding. Use the addition property of equality to solve g minus 25 equals 113. For these, there are two methods that you can choose, whichever you prefer. We have the horizontal method and the vertical method. The horizontal method, you are just writing things out sideways. The vertical method, which is the method I prefer, you're writing and working your way down. So for the horizontal method, we're gonna start with our original equation, but then add things to the side. Here, they showed us adding 25. So we would need to add 25 to the other side in order to keep our true statement. How did we know to add? We're going to look to see what was originally there and we're gonna do the opposite. So the fact that it said minus 25 there to begin with, we now are gonna do the opposite. By doing this, those are going to cancel out to zero. If you remember back to previous lesson with additive inverse, adding its opposite is going to equal zero. And we don't need to write plus zero because we're adding nothing. So adding the opposite thing or doing the opposite thing will end up canceling out to make zero, which is how we can start to get the variable by itself. Now, since we did it to the other side, we need to combine like terms and we end up with 138. The vertical method is going to do the same thing, except working our way down. This is the method I prefer. And doing the vertical method, my first step is always draw a line through the equal sign. This is gonna remind me that whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So here I added 25 for the same reason before. It's the opposite of what's there. And I need to do it to both sides. Again, combining like terms, 113 plus 25 is 138. Now that we think we have the answer, let's double check. Here to check our answer, we're going to take what we got and plug it back in to the original equation. So instead of G, we're gonna substitute back in 138. Is 138 minus 25 equal to 113? Yes, we find the same thing on both sides. It is true. We must have got the correct answer. Checking your answer is important. Sometimes you'll find you made a tiny mistake and your answer will not come out to be true. Check your understanding, solve two thirds plus W equals one and a half. Choose the correct answer and which property that you needed to use to solve this. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First of all, I know because this is plus two thirds, in order to do the opposite, I would need to subtract from both sides because that way this side would cancel out. So first of all, I know I'm subtracting, which leaves me with A or D. Which of these values is going to get me one and a half? So when we're adding fractions, two thirds, plus w equals, I'm gonna change this mixed number into a, an improper fraction. So one times two plus one, three halves. Now adding fractions, I need a common denominator. So I'm gonna make it out of six. So two thirds is the same as four sixths plus w. Three halves is the same as nine sixths. Multiply each by three. And now my common denominator. To get w by itself, I would need to do the opposite. So subtract, subtract. Same on both sides, so W must be equal to five sixths, A. Example two, solve by subtracting. Here we're gonna use the subtraction property to solve 27 plus K equals 30. Again, we have our two methods. And again, like before, we're going to choose what to do based on what we see. So here I have plus 27, or there's even a hidden plus out front, plus 27. We're gonna do the opposite. 
So we would need to subtract 27. That way we get zero. What we do on one side, we have to do on the other. So subtracting 27 from both sides, we end up with three. You may have been able to just reason what number plus 27 equals 30 and get three, but this is using the subtraction property. Our vertical method is again, the same. I draw my mirror line, subtract 27 from both sides. On the left, it goes to zero and disappears. On the right, we end up with three. Please get in the habit of checking your answers. So taking what you got and plugging it back in, is 27 plus three equal to 30? Yes, 30 is equal to 30, so that is true. We can tell we have the correct answer. Check your understanding. Solve A plus 26 equals 35. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that A was equal to nine. For this, we would just use our subtraction property. So A plus 26 equals 35 is our original. We're going to subtract the same thing from both sides. I know this because I see add 26, so I have to do the opposite. So both sides, I'm using our vertical method, so A equals nine. 35 minus 26 equals nine. Let's learn solve one step equations involving multiplication or division. So just like the two properties we used, there's also the multiplication property and the division property of equality. The multiplication property says if you multiply the same thing to both sides, your equation's still true. And for this, we're generally gonna say that C cannot be equal to zero. Our division property is also similar, but if you divide both sides by the same thing, you're still gonna get a true equation. And in this one, you definitely cannot divide by zero because dividing by zero gives you an undefined answer and we're looking for a solution. Example four, solve equations by multiplying or dividing. Solve each equation. So in part A, we have three eighths times X equals nine fourths. For this one, we're going to use the fact that dividing with fractions, we just multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of going through and just immediately trying to divide by three eighths to both sides, which you could do, we could do divide by three eighths and we'd end up with dividing it on both sides. Three eighths divided by three eighths is one, which is what we want. What ends up happening is you have to multiply by the reciprocal anyway. So instead of dividing by a fraction, we could just multiply by the reciprocal. So they showed that here, multiplying by eight thirds, if we do that to both sides, we end up with a final answer of six. On the top, we would end up with 72. On the bottom, we would end up with 12. 72 divided by 12 is six. So dividing with a fraction, multiplying by the reciprocal, end up doing the same thing. If you see fractions, that's a good strategy to use. If it's not dealing with fractions, if it's just dealing with whole numbers or even decimals, then we can just use the division property. So here they did the vertical method, starting with 42 equals negative 14 Y. To get Y, this is showing multiplication, negative 14 times Y. So we would need to do the opposite, which is divide both sides by negative 14, and we end up with Y is equal to negative three. Check your understanding. Solve 6y equals 54. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that y was equal to 9. This is showing multiplication. 6 times y equals 54. So we would need to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. Dividing both sides by 6, we would get 9. Check your understanding. Read through the situation. Determine which equation shows how much Imani paid for the yard of fabric and calculate how much each yard costs. Pause the video now and complete the check. Let's check. Going through, she spends 146 as her total on 21 yards of fabric. We wanna know how much for each yard, so for one yard of fabric. If we're going through, I know my total is 146.58, and it's going to be the yards of fabric, which here they use P, and we have to buy 21 of them. So 21P is gonna be equal to 146.58. So not B or C, the equations are correct so far. And then to figure out how to solve, this is showing multiplication. So we would need to divide by 21 to both sides. And P must be equal to 698, which is A. Take time to pause and reflect. Did you struggle with anything in this lesson? If so, how did you deal with it? Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Let's learn, use square roots to solve equations. So squares and square roots are gonna be a fifth and sixth type of one-step equation. However, for this year, you're only gonna really need to do the square root to solve. So just like multiplication and division or addition and subtraction, taking the square of a number, which is the exponent of two, and taking the square root of a number, they are opposites, so they undo each other. They are called inverse operations. So thinking back, if you take the square of a number, nine to the second power means nine times nine, you get 81. If I wanted to undo that, then I would take the square root and I would go back to what I started with, which is nine. 
But remember, taking the sway root also produces a positive and negative answer, so we would need that plus or minus symbol. This is going to come in handy when we want to solve for x to the second power. So let's say we have x to the second power equals p. Since we see that little 2 for the exponent connected to x, if I want to solve for x, I need to undo that exponent with a root. So I would just take the square root of both sides. Again, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And I end up with x would be equal to the square root of p. When you do this, you're going to end up with two solutions, the positive square root and the negative square root. Again, shown with the plus or minus symbol. Example five, use square roots to solve equations. So solve t squared equals 169. Check your solution. So our original equation is t to the second power equals 169. If we want to get t by itself, we're going to undo that exponent with a root. So we would take the square root of both sides. And then we end up with t by itself equals positive or negative 13, because 13 times 13 is 169. So our final answer then would be t is equal to positive 13 and t equals negative 13. Positive and negative answers. Check your understanding. Simplify y squared equals 256. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got y was equal to positive and negative 16, plus or minus 16, because 16 times 16 is 256.